Compañeros and compañeras, we're about to begin. My name is Lourdes Garcia. I'm on the advisory board of Pro Libertad. Pro Libertad was formed in the 1980s as an organization to fight for the liberty of the political prisoners, the Puerto Rican political prisoners. But in, over the years, we have begun also working with all political prisoners and will continue to struggle until all political prisoners are free. Specifically, not just Ana Belén Montes, but also our compañeros and compañeras from the Black Panther parties, our compañero Leonard Peltier, and other political prisoners of this country. Today's program is focusing on International Working Women's Day and commemorating the revolutionary women of Puerto Rico who have helped to struggle for our liberation. We're not just talking about the women that we have known throughout history, like Mariana Bracetti who fought against the Spanish colonialism, or Lolita Lebron, Blanca Canales, Doris de Resola. These are the women that have been with us, but we're also talking about, for example, and commemorating and standing up for and lifting up the women who fought to remove the, the, the La Marina from Vieques and Culebra, the women who are fighting today against femicide in Puerto Rico, the assassination of women and girls in Puerto Rico, the women who are fighting on behalf of trans women and the assassination and the persecution of trans women, the women who are fighting in the Federation of Puerto Rican Women, the teachers who have helped to rebuild and restore schools in Puerto Rico after Irma and Maria, and are still fighting to keep schools open in Puerto Rico and are providing services to the communities that they teach in and that they work in. These are all of the women that we consider part of our struggle as Puerto Rican people because in every single way, whether they are conscious or not, they are struggling against the abusive conditions that colonialism has created for us in Puerto Rico. And with those struggles, we are able to begin to build a base to bring about an end to colonialism in Puerto Rico and to struggle for the independence of Puerto Rico. Our program today will have poetry as well as speakers. Our first poet is Nancy Mercado. Nancy was named one of 200 living individuals who best embody the work and spirit of Frederick Douglass by the Frederick Douglass Family Initiatives and the Anti-Racist Research and Policy Center at American University. Nancy is the recipient of the 2017 American Book Award for Lifetime Achievement, presented by the Before Columbus Foundation, and editor of the first New Yorican Women Writers Anthology, published in Voices, e-magazine of the Center for Puerto Rican Studies at Hunter College. If you want more information about Nancy, you can visit her website at nancy-mercado.com. I leave you now with Nancy Mercado. Oh, sorry, she's not back. <laughs> it doesn't go on and on. <laughs> Stop me. Okay, okay. Let's give it up for Nancy. Let's give it up for Nancy. Next time, stop me. <laughs> Thank goodness that I came outside, you know? Right on time. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, it's a pleasure to be here, everyone. Uh, thank you for inviting me. Um, it's good to see everyone in person, finally. <laughs> Damn, man. This has been a year of horror, <laughs> to say the least. Okay, I'm going to read a couple old pieces because uh, in, in tune with what we're here for. Um, I'll start off with... Uh, piece that I wrote for my grandmother in honor of, of Women's uh, Month and uh, of the women who were radical women. My grandmother was certainly one. Uh, just her existence was radical enough and that she made it to 102. She made it to 102 is radical enough in Puerto Rico when they were uh, sterilizing our women and doing all manner of craziness, still are. Um, this is titled, Mija, Mi Abuela, Puerto Rico. Mija lived eons ago when sandals pounded dirt roads, blazing hot under palm tree-lined skies. 
Mija's long dark hair flowed side to side, glistened in the noon light. Mahogany skin she shot. Platanos, drukas, a bark of soap. Mija worked, striking clothes against wooden boards, gathering wood for evening meals, feeding chickens, hogs, dogs, and roosters at dawn. Mija traveled only once to Chicago. A color-faded photograph serves as document. Smiles and thousands of hugs for the grandchildren on a park bench. Mija is a century old and still remembers every one of us, even those left over in the U.S. She still carries a stick, certain of her authority over four generations. Mija outlived two world wars, saw the first television, the first electric bulb in her town, Hitler, segregation, the Vietnam War, and Gorbachev. Mija can speak of the turn of the century land reforms, of the blinded enthusiasm for a man called Marin, and the mass migration of the 1950s. Sugarcane cutter for life, she can speak of the love of a people, of the pain of separation. Mija can speak of the Caribbean Ocean, the history of the sun and sand, and the mystery of the stars. Mija maintains an eternal candle lit just for me. Mija will live for all time. It's important to document our people because if we don't do it, who will, right? Uh, now, I'll read the accompanying, two more poems, I'll read the accompanying poem to this one, which is the one uh, about her husband, Portolo, his name was Portolatin, but we, used, we called him Portolo, <laughs> for short. Don, this uh, title is Don Portolo, Mi Abuelo, Puerto Rico. I remember him in the black of night. His smile emitted a beam of light around his face. He walked with machete in hand ever so gently down the narrow dirt roads he grew to know as home. He was blacker than the blackest night you'd ever seen. He was lean and so serene you'd melt at the touch of his word to your ear. He was dear to his children. He was Don Portolo, director of the sugarcane field workers now gone. He was strong and rather tall. His voice never shook even in the gravest of situations. He was the bravest man this nation's never seen. He was forgotten before he could be remembered by the heads of state he provided sugar for. He was never seen near the White House. No one there knows his name. No one there knows he's dying. No one there knows he's unable to respond to the questions his grandchildren now ask him. No one there is giving him a pension for his lifelong service in the cause of sugar providing for the morning's coffee cup effort. I see no flags waving at half mast. I hear no shots being fired in his honor. He only dies quietly on his front porch rocker, remembering how it used to be before the Industrial Revolution before computerized technology, before the first atomic bomb was dropped, Don Portolo should be given a 50-gun salute. Thank you. And thank you. The last, this last piece I'll, I'll uh, read for you is called The Master Pedro Aviso Campos, a maestro. This was based on a, on a photograph that I saw of him where some he was in, on a wheelchair after he had been um, pumped up with radiation in the jail cell and he couldn't walk anymore and someone was uh, you know, rubbing his forehead to comfort him. And so I saw that photograph and I, I wrote this piece. Slumped over, the master weeps. Flags fly at half mast. Anthems are whispered. A solitary wail descends, heart stolen, buried beneath snow. The master contemplates solitary confinement, 
A warm hand brushes the anguish from his forehead. Another thorn driven deeper. Crucified bodies sway in Ponce. Tattered souls stagger under sub-zero temperatures. Language lost in the wind. The master sits, wrapped by a nation of tears and dashed hopes. The auction block cleared for the next descendant. A surge of migrant bodies to the north. Cripples cut sugarcane in their mind. The master, lost in his thoughts, advocates for the little people to the stars. A small island in his palm. Children saved with his blood. Ancestors enlightenment restored. Legends for generations to contemplate on. The master's work done ponders beyond the coffin. From his eye propels a lone star into the night sky, a beacon to guide, a speck of earth in the sea, a group of travelers through revolving doors. Gracias. Thank you, compañera Nancy Machirik for Nancy. Our next speaker, our next presenter, is Amor Castillo from New York Boricua Resistance. The following, uh, Amor Castillo is the Solidarity Officer for New York Boricua Resistance, an organization modeled after and in alliance with Chicago Boricua Resistance. New York Boricua Resistance is composed of individuals in solidarity with Puerto Rico who are enraged about the current economic humanitarian crisis caused by U.S. colonialism. New York Boricua Resistance believes that the diaspora constitutes an essential part of the struggle against oppression and plays an important part, part and role in the struggle for liberation because of its geographical placement in the belly of the beast. Amor. Can you hear me with my mask on? Okay. It's a beautiful day. <laughs> Today we celebrate the revolutionary women before us. Today we say their names. Lolita Lebron, Sylvia Rivera, Julia de Burgos, Dilcia Pagan, Blanca Canales, Iris Morales, Denise Oliver Velez, Celestina Cordero, Alicia and Aida Luz Rodriguez. We recognize the sacrifices and contributions these women made toward the liberation of Puerto Rico. We celebrate the revolutionary women in front of us, some of them who are here today, such as Lorraine from A Call to Action, Jocelyn from Se Acabron Las Promesas, Mercedes from FMPR. It would take me longer than I have now to list them all, but I know you can think of Boricua women leading the struggle for revolution. If you know their names, shout them out. Milagros Rivera. Milagros Rivera. Lulu Garcia. Lulu Garcia. Esperanza Martel. Esperanza Martel. Doña Belina Antonetti. <laughs> Doña Del Favera. We could say we could we could be here all day. <laughs> These revolutionary women continually inspire us to fight against the various forms of imperialist oppression. Their legacy propels us to fight for police and prison abolition, housing for all, universal health care, the liberation of Puerto Rico, and the end of capitalism. Their words, actions, and revolutionary perspectives provide the framework for our continued organizing. New York Boricua resistance recognizes that Puerto Rico cannot truly be liberated without the liberation of women and oppressed genders from any form of violence whether mental, physical, or verbal. We stand in solidarity with the people of Puerto Rico and the black and brown, queer, and trans women on the ground demanding justice for women every day. We condemn the continued violence against women, girls, and the LGBTQ community in the Borinquen Archipelago. The violence being inflicted on Boricua women by gringo tourists like Devin Sanders is a direct result of neo-colonialism neoliberalism and imperialism to which we condemn. Today and every day, New York Boricua resistance stands in solidarity with those engaged in the struggle to end gender-based violence in Puerto Rico. 
We also stand in solidarity today with the caravan mobilizing this morning against Ley 20 y 22 from Rincón to Aguadilla. Today we celebrate these women. As Lolita once shouted in the middle of our imperial oppressor's house, Que viva Puerto Rico libre! I didn't hear the, the viva. Que viva Puerto Rico libre! Our next presenter is a poet that we've all known for many years, Rafael Landron. He's known to many of us for his commitment and contribution throughout the years. Rafael is a poet, a cultural worker, and an educator. He believes in the power of art to overthrow systems of oppression and in a free Puerto Rico, free from U.S. colonialism. Rafael. All right, how's everybody doing? Good, good. it's good to be here. It uh, feels good to be in person, no? Yes, yeah. finally. <laughs> okay. This one is entitled uh, Blanca Nos Está Llamando. Blanca Nos Está Llamando. Can we heed her call from the hilltops of Hayuya where centuries ago we did battle with Spanish invaders? Can we heed her call now where the new invader has taken over in the name of democracy, in the name of freedom? where it doesn't even allow you to fly your own flag. Blanca Canales nos está llamando. Every Puerto Rican who believes in justice, the time is ripe once again to topple an empire. This one who portends to be benevolent, but is nothing but a killer. Stolen lives of our unborn, practicing genocide under Malthusian philosophies of overpopulation. You have killed our unborn by thousands. Blanca Canales nos está llamando. It is time for every Puerto Rican to decide who we are, descendants of the Taino Africano or Simplemente Español, to those of us who have forgotten or have been brainwashed to believe that your enemy is your benefactor. Blanca te está llamando to remember who you are, to decide to summon your courage, Boricua, to heed her call from the mountaintops of Hadilla, declare yourself free, free from capitalism, Free from the Prozac pills and your local U.S. pharmaceutical pushers have convinced you to take. Free from depression. Free from the higher rent. Free from the pr prisons in our minds. Free from the patriarchy that binds. Free from feeling broke all the time. Blanca te está llamando once again. Can we heed her call? To be better. To stand taller. To be righteous and brave. To stand up to the monster of the U.S. empire that is crumbling as we speak. Boricua, will you side with power or justice? Boricua, will you side with empire or who you truly are? Boricua, can you hear the call from Hallelujah? Blanca Canales is calling your name to stand up and be counted, to end all the shame, to reject all the lame, consumerist items of this McDonald's existence and be free. Boricua, Blanca Canales is está llamando from Boricua to the Bronx, Brooklyn, Boston, all of us, can we hear her call to end the American empire, to stand against the colonizer who says that we are the same one who's been stealing since, 19, since 1898? Barica, Blanca is calling us to learn who we are, to stand up to injustice no matter the cost. From the hills of Jalilla, where we did battle with Espanol centuries ago, Barica, defend lo tuyo. Remember who you are and who you came from. Blanca nos está llamando to use every ounce of our soul to be free. Free of this capitalist bullshit democracy. We're being pimped in war after war as cannon fodder for rich white men. Bariqua, learn your history and be free of the rent collector in your mind that makes you kill the children in Afghanistan while the same ones are writing policies to put us in prisons and erect borders and sterilize more poor women we are just trying to find some peace, just like you, Boricua. Blanca Canales is calling you to free yourself from the racism of the, of the mind that is killing you to prove, to prove that you are white enough to be an American. Blanca is calling you us to rid ourselves of the patriarchy that has us fight and kill our own trans and gay brothers and sisters before going against the real enemy of U.S. colonialism. Boricuas, 
Don't get on us, Mr. Stalin Mango, to free ourselves of this bullshit, hypocritical, monkey existence. Will we heed her call? Will we heed her call from this educator, social worker, to stand up for love and justice? Don't get on us, Mr. Stalin Mango. Who will listen? Who will take up the mantle of justice? We will. We will. Thank you. The following presenter is a longtime activist and organizer, well-known member of the Puerto Rican Independence Party, the PIP, the branch of New York. The Puerto Rican Independence Party is one of Puerto Rico's oldest independence parties. It has had over 60 years, more than 60 years, of consistently denouncing the colonial situation of Puerto Rico and demanding independence for Puerto Rico for the archipelago, not just Puerto Rico, the whole archipelago. It has been at the United Nations, it has been at local, national, and international forums. With you, Carmen Ayala. y soy pintora puertorriqueña realizada en este vecindario en esta grandiosa tarde regreso, regreso mi nombre es Carmen Ayala Dávila, soy pintora puertorriqueña radicada en este vecindario. En esta grandiosa tarde he venido a representar la mujer Pipiola en esta actividad. Por tanto, traigo un saludo cordial y afectuoso para todas las personas aquí presentes a nombre de nuestra organización, Comité Partido Independentista Puertorriqueño de Nueva York. Un saludo especial a Pro Libertad, organizadores de este evento y a todos en general. Nos complace en gran manera poder saludar y compartir con todas estas mujeres que día a día, que día, a día representaron nuestros valores patriotas, nuestra idiosincrasia y nuestra identidad de pueblo y nuestra lucha por la soberanía de Puerto Rico. En el día de hoy, unidos nuestros caminos para traer el mensaje de igualdad. ¡Viva Puerto Rico Libre, Patria Nueva! Gracias. Just a quick commercial, mi gente. A very quick quick commercial. Queremos recordar que Cuba y Puerto Rico son do, las dos patrias que siempre tenemos tus relaciones. We're solidarity between Puerto Rico and Cuba. Tomorrow, there is a caravan that's taking place in New York City. You know what, Shep? You know the details, right? Shep, come make that announcement. We have a caravan para Cuba mañana that's taking place in Harlem. We're gonna do a quick commercial. Give us the details, Chef. All power to the people. All power. No, that ain't it. All power to the people. All power to the people. Right on. Um, we're gonna actually start at the Harlem State Office building. Everybody can hear me? Okay. We're gonna gather there at one o'clock. Try to get there at 12.30, but one o'clock we're gonna gather if you have a vehicle, put the Cuba flags on it, put your signs on it. What we want to do is say, U.S. out of, Puerto, out of Cuba, yeah, Puerto Rico too. <laughs> so we want to um, end the blockade, get out of Guantanamo Bay, and we have normalizations between Cuba and the United States. So that's what the um, caravan is about. We're going to gather there, we're going to go through our barrio, we're going to go past the People's Church right over on 111th and Lexington. And there's supposed to be a street festival there. Now, we know it might rain tomorrow, 
that we're going to, you know, do what we can do. But the caravan will be there. If you don't have signs, we'll have signs for you. Any questions? <laughs> Tomorrow, Hall State Office Building. 12 to 12 30 1 o'clock departure through our barrio to end the blockade on cuba viva thank you brother chef go in puerto rico son de un pájaro las dos alas our next speaker is lorraine liriano lorraine is an educator a lifelong resident of sunset park brooklyn and a member of a call to action on Puerto Rico, an anti-colonial pro-independence organization formed in July 2015. A call to action has organized and sponsored educational forums and events on the colonial situation of Puerto Rico, and has organized and participated in numerous rallies and demonstrations denouncing the colonial imperial relationship of the United States and Puerto Rico. I too am a member of a call to action in Puerto Rico. I'm proud to present my sister, Lorraine Liriano. Muy buenas tardes. Muy buenas tardes a todas, todos y todes. Mis camaradas mis, y todas las personas que están aquí que aman la libertad y la justicia. I'd like to say good afternoon to my comrades. I'd like to say good afternoon to everyone here who loves social justice and peace in this world. It is a pleasure to be here this afternoon with you today in the community of El Barrio who has a long tradition of social justice in the presence of so many women who are activists who have contributed to our social struggle. Es un privilegio estar aquí en El Barrio con una historia tan larga de lucha y de justicia para tantas comunidades y estar entre ustedes hoy día. A call to action was formed in 2015 in response to La Junta Fiscal. Call to action was formed as an anti-capitalist, anti-imperial collective. And we have stood fast in our resolve to continue to struggle for the freedom of Puerto Rico as an anti-capitalist, anti-imperialist identity. These words are dedicated to the legacy of the women that have been in our struggle since before the colonization of Puerto Rico. I want to acknowledge also the indigenous women who fought against the Spaniards. Quiero reconocer a las mujeres indígenas y los pueblos indígenas que aún luchan por su libertad y su justicia social. Our revolution has a soul. It is woman. Our revolution has a spirit. It is woman. Our revolution has an action. It is woman. Our revolution has a wisdom. It is woman. Our revolution has been passed to us from generation to generation, from DNA to the blood that runs through our veins. Our revolution is matriarchal. As we turn the pages of time, we are reminded of our power, of our purpose, and of our history. Luisa Capetillo demonstrated our power to organize the working class in Puerto Rico, in Cuba, in Miami, and in New York, and affirmed our internationalism. Dominga Berril de la Cruz showed us love of our country as she rescued the Puerto Rican flag while we were being massacred in 1937 in the Massacre de Ponce. Blanca Canales led our insurrection in El Grito de Hayuya on October 1950. Lolita Lebron, commanding congressional space on March 1st, 1954, to declare our Puerto Rican sovereignty. Julia de Burgos, 
through poetics brought uprising to our thoughts, juxtapositioned our liberation to land through El Rio Grande de Luisa. Isabel Rosado Morales showed us that revolution and resistance is a lifetime commitment as she was arrested for civil disobedience to protest the Navy in Vieques in February 10th, 2014. Aida Luz Rodriguez, in her 10th anniversary as a political prisoner, reminds us we embrace armed tactics and strategy in defense of our future and the integrity of Puerto Rican flora and fauna. We have sacrificed our personal freedom for our motherland. Ahora lo voy a leer en español. Gracias y gracias por la, el tiempo. Nuestra revolución tiene arma. Es mujer. Nuestra revolución tiene espíritu. Es mujer. Nuestra revolución tiene acción. Es mujer. Nuestra revolución tiene sabiduría. Es mujer. Nuestra revolución ha sido pasado de generación a generación desde el ADN hasta la sangre que corre en nuestras venas. Nuestra revolución es matriarcal. Mientras damos la vuelta a las páginas del tiempo, nos acordamos de nuestro poder, propósito y historia. Luisa Capetillo nos demostró nuestro poder en organizar la clase obrera en Puerto Rico, Cuba, Miami y Nueva York y afirmar nuestro internacionalismo. Dominga Berrir de Cruz nos demostró el amor a la matria cuando rescató la bandera puertorriqueña durante la masacre de Ponce. Blanca Canares dirigió la instrucción del grito de Jayuda el 30 de octubre de 1950. Lolita Lebrón, comandante de la ocupación del espacio del Congreso estadounidense para el firmar el derecho para firmar el derecho perdón, gracias <laughs> thank you thank you para firmar el derecho a la soberanía puertorriqueña Julia de Burgos a través de su poesía nos trajo los pensamientos de sublevación a nuestros pensamientos en justa posición a la liberación de nuestra tierra en Río Grande de Luisa. Isabel Rosado Morales nos enseñó que la revolución y la resistencia es un compromiso de toda la vida cuando fue arrestada en el acto de desobediencia civil en protesta de las maniobras de la Marina en Vieques el 10 de febrero 2014. Y le dejo con estos pensamientos Aida Luz Rodríguez en su décima aniversario del cancelamiento en 1994 de Caro, nosotros acogemos la lucha armada con estrategia en defensa de nuestro futuro, la integridad de la flora y fauna de Puerto Rico. Nosotros hemos sacrificado nuestra libertad personal para nuestra patria. ¡Que viva Puerto Rico libre! ¡Que viva Puerto Rico socialista! ¡Que viva Puerto Rico feminista! Porque sin nosotros, sin las mujeres puertorriqueñas, no hay revolución, no hay Puerto Rico. Nosotros somos el alma y el corazón de nuestro pueblo. ¡Que viva Puerto Rico! Gracias, Lorraine, como siempre. I have a few announcements, and then we're going to be closing. Um, on April 3rd, next Saturday, we're going to have a, commit, a committee meet. I'm sorry. There's going to be an event called Betances, Compromiso y Constancia. And it's going to be in front of the Roberto Clemente Center on 540 East 13th Street in the Lower East Side, between A and B. That's at 1 p.m. next Saturday an event commemorating Betances, Betances Compromiso y Constancia, Commitment and Steadfastness. 
And there's going to be, the speakers will be Ruben Berrios Martinez, Guarionex Padilla Martí, Carmen Ayala Davila, and Ben Bayo. Again, in the Lower East Side. Our next, uh, commit, our next is uh, on April 11th in Art Park, Poetry Month kickoff. That's on 120th in Lexington. On April 11th, Art Park is going to have its Poetry Month kickoff. If you have any questions, you can ask Debbie Quinones standing right here. She can answer any more questions you have. And regarding the Betanzas event, you can ask Eric Ramos, who's standing over there, regarding any questions of the Betanzas event. We're now going to close off this event by inviting Nancy Mercado to read us one last poem. The uh, Art Park poetry reading is from 2 to 4? 12 to 4. From 12 to 4. Thank you, Lulu. Thank you, everyone, for coming. I'm, the, this last piece that I'll read is uh, an environmental piece. As you know, uh, unfortunately, uh, we're really actually destroying the earth. And, uh, <laughs> And that goes for Puerto Rico too. There's a, uh, you know, Puerto Rico is beautiful, and uh, you know the fa factories and industry that's been there have, you know, dumped uh, so many chemicals and junk. And there, you know, there's a big uh, fight in Venezuela's because of the um, the ashes that they're dumping from coal, which is ludicrous because there's no need for that. There's so much sun there. We should be on uh, clean energy. Uh, so this piece is uh, titled, I Have Seen, and uh, dedicated to, uh, to Puerto Rico and its beautiful uh, natural beauty. And I want to thank everyone for coming out too. It's great uh, to see everyone, beautiful day. I have witnessed the demise that is ours, the brutal ways of the minute, the selfishness of zooming wealth, I've seen the land invaded, smashed beyond repair, smelled the air of smokestacks, towering billows of babbling businessmen. I have witnessed bone-ridden children whose flesh seems stretched, almost transparent, falling off lifeless, and know in some small town excess crop burns in the name of profit. I have heard the word of many a gold-laced pasture spewing forth psychological manipulations, digging his own grave with every breath. I have swum in animate oceans, blanketed with fish who were my friends, and look up to see a grave hole in the dome that protects us, and wonder how such a great species lies dormant of the mind and things that matter. My eyes see and pity the petty creatures that roam the stock exchanges of the earth, my eyes weep in an effort to understand our foolishness. My eyes search for the natives who were once here for that which can move wretched tyrants towards knowing the importance of what is invisible. Thank you so much. Thank you, compañeros and compañeras. Before I turn this over to Ben Ramos, I want to remind you even though we're commemorating International Working Women's Day, as all the women who have spoken here have stated, the struggle for women is every single day. As women, we struggle every single day. And we need the solidarity of our brothers every single day. Not one day a year, every single day, you need to stand with us against misogyny, against the brutality that women face, against rape, against the molestation of our children. You must stand with us. And when we point out to you some of the issues you, miss, you need to struggle with, do not get violent with us. Understand that we are all in a process of struggle, we are all in a process of change. And we need you to be conscious about your role in that struggle. And it is not just to assume that you are the leaders, but to step aside and make sure that we stand beside you as leaders in that struggle. 
Thank you very much. I leave you now with Ben Ramos from Pro Libertad. Pro Libertad started this event of celebrating revolutionary women porque Doña Rosa Escobar asked me when I was like 18, 19 years old to organize an event to celebrate Doña Isabel Rosado coming to New York City. We put together an event where we dedicated and celebrated her life and we sat down over 50 young people and listened to her talk about her life. And that became the origin of why we celebrate revolutionary women, why we celebrate La Boricua, La Madre de la Patria. So right now, brothers and sisters, I'm gonna call out the name of one of our sisters and you're going to say presente. You're gonna say that presente that rocks the fuck out of El Barrio, all right? We're gonna be louder than the traffic, louder than the people walking in the street, louder than the basketball game. So when I say, Doña Adel Favera, presente! Doña Rosa Escobar, presente! Doña Evelina Antonetti, presente! Doña Helen Rodriguez, presente! Familia, we have a prisoner of conscience named Ana Belen Montes that is still in jail. She is getting out sometime either, either early 2023 or in July of 2023. She's a cancer patient. She's in jail because she chose to follow her conscience and not the law. She chose to protect Cuba's right to self-determination and autonomy. She chose to fight the blockade. She chose to fight against the idea of taking Cuba's right to its self-determination away. I've been giving out literature on Ana Belen. She's fighting cancer. She's fighting the isolation of being in a psychiatric ward when she should not be there. Tenemos que prepararnos porque ella va a salir. She's getting out. Go to the Pro Libertad website. We are going to start a campaign to raise money. She's going to get out of jail and she's going to be 65 years old, a cancer patient. Being able to go back to work is probably not going to be real. So we need to put together a fund for her. So go to the Pro Libertad website and you'll have information so that you can donate to Ana Belen. It is coming in April. Compañeros, compañera, one last time. Que viva la mujer boricua. Que viva! Que viva! Que viva! Que viva! Independencia para Puerto Rico. Independencia para Puerto Rico. Independencia para Puerto Rico. Gracias, mi gente. Gracias.